bushman is not dependent on water holes. His forebears have had thousands of years to adapt to the Kalahari, so he needs very little liquid and he knows where to find it. An insignificant looking dry twig tells him where to dig. Anyone else would die of thirst in a few days in this treacherous desert that doesn't look like a desert. But he can survive for months on end. He unearths a bulbous root, which is really just a solid lump of wood with hard fibers that are merely damp. Civilized man would need some pretty complicated technology and machinery to get water out of it. But he uses the very simplest of tools. His scraper is a stick that has been split to give it a sharp edge, and he produces some dry-looking shavings. But you take a handful, point your thumb at your mouth, squeeze very hard, and wait for it. The baboons always have a secret supply of water, and they're not going to tell anybody where it is. And when a Mahalakhari ventures into the deep Kalahari on a hunting trip, he has to find water, because unlike the Bushman, he doesn't know how to make liquid from a root. But he has his own way of finding out where the water is. First, he laboriously drills a hole in a giant ant heap when he is sure a baboon is watching him, because he knows baboons are incurably inquisitive. Next, he puts some wild melon seeds into the hole and works them in so that they drop into a hollow. Then he saunters off, knowing the baboon is burning with curiosity. The baboon doesn't trust that human being at all, so he plays it cool. But he's dying to know what gives in that confounded hole. Finally, Mr. Inquisitive can't take it any longer. He's got to know what's in there. He reaches in, grabs a fistful, and now his hand's too big to come out. If he had the sense to drop the seed, he could free his hand. Now he lets go when it's too late. So that was a smart enough way to catch a baboon, but he still has to make him talk. Now he knows that salt is very scarce in this particular area, and that baboon is going to eat those lumps like candy. In fact, he has such a ball eating salt that he completely forgets he's under arrest, and that in a little while he's going to be a mighty thirsty baboon. Next morning, the Mahalakhadi goes to have a closer look to see whether his prisoner is ready to talk. He decides the brainwashing has worked, so he sets him free, knowing that in his condition, he won't care who follows him to the secret reservoir. Kalahari has no eyes for the beauty of the setting. To him, water is beautiful. Mm -hmm. 